Michael, welcome. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a long while. Too long. Yes. <laughs> In this interview, I would like for you to answer some questions uh, about your book, The Structure of Personality. I think this interview will give uh, some insights about the book and why people should read it. So, okay. uh, yeah. So my first question is, why did you write the Structure of Personality book in the first place? Well, so at the time, um, the question in the field of NLP in the late 1990s was, is NLP just a shallow self-help process or can it really deal with significant human problems? And so um, having written uh, a number of things, especially the figuring out people and the profiling of people and the perceptual way they operate in the world, um, I thought uh, there's nothing written that deals with schizophrenia, depression, uh, and so on. And so uh, let's apply NLP and neurosemantics to the personality disorders. Amazing. Okay, so uh, tell me about um, what was the book position within um, the depth and breadth of your massive project? So in the field of psychology, uh, there's two ideas about people. One is that people are types. The other is that people are uh, living dynamic experiences. Typology, going back to the ancient Greeks, um, was a way of trying to figure out people and to put them into categories. You're this kind, you're this type. And typology has the assumption, because you're that type, you can't change. So in NLP, neural semantics, uh, we take a whole different view of it. Uh, the state view that it's a, an experience of our state and that personality is what we do, not what we are. And, and if it's what we do, it's what I do with my mind, it's what I do with my emotions, it's what I do, how I talk, uh, how I behave, how I relate. And so it's a, it's a dynamic function of how each of us operate in a certain context. And if that's the case, then personality can be changed, can be transformed, and nobody is stuck with their personality. Amazing. Um, so what was the story that gathered you, Dr. Richard Bolstad and uh, Bob Badenhammer um, and Margo Hamlet uh, to write, write this book? So I began writing it with Bob. Bob and I had a few years before that finished uh, figuring out people, which was a, about personality and personality perceptions. And so I began um, writing it, getting Bob to supplement. Uh, at that time, I had ended my therapy practice. So I wasn't doing therapy uh, with clients anymore. And Bob was. So I would write about something. And he, he would have clients who were suffering depression or something. And he would, he would work with them with some of the patterns and processes we were working with. So it was a good combination of theory and practice. And so we, we were doing that for quite some time. I began, in my research, um, one, one of the only people at that time, since, since then, many more have done it, but at that time, Richard Bolstad uh, was about the only person really addressing significant personality problems. And he had written in NLP World and Anchor Point and other places. So I contacted Richard and said, I would like you to contribute some of the chapters uh, in this book that I had already mapped out. And he was perfectly glad to do that. And so we started inter interacting. And uh, I asked him which chapters he would like to contribute. And so we picked out a few. He got working on those to, to make them fit into the context of the book. How was it for you to work with uh, your co-authors? Uh, feelings, uh, difficulties, and uh, 
eventually, how would you evaluate this project after all these years of its release? Well, Bob and I have always had a real um, uh, interesting way of interacting. Um, I usually lead off uh, with writing, with the uh, theoretical work, and then and then he challenges it. He practices it. He he looks at it inside out, and he looks at it really with some practical eyes. And so we have a similar style. If I write something in the morning and send it to him by early afternoon, he has looked it over and, and he has sent it back. And I look it over and in the early evening, I'll send it to him. Late evening, he sends it back. So we're real quick at responding back and forth. It's a, um, a good synergy. With Richard, um, Richard comes from a really different place. And uh, he was in New Zealand at the time. He now lives in Japan. And so uh, he takes uh, a lot of the Eastern religions and is part of just who he is and, and how he operates. And so he put, he put into the book at different places um, references uh, to things like that. And um, we had a discussion and I said, I'm fine with you presenting your, your opinion. That's fine. Uh, it's your opinion. And if it supplements whatever we're writing about, that's that's fine. Uh, but I don't want to be uh, basing any of that on m those models. I want the models to be an illustration, not the foundation. And so we talked around that one a, a good bit. And finally, he said he was he could live with that. He was OK with that. Um, and then when I introduced the general semantics idea of the multi-ordinality of self, that the word self can apply to itself so that we can, because um, we all have that sense that here I am a living sentient being, but I also have a sense that there's a part of me that directs me. There's a part of me that plans for my future me. So the multi-ordinality of self, and Richard didn't like it. He did not like it at all. And when he read the five or six pages I put in the book about that, he wanted it taken out. And I said, well, it's my opinion. And just like I respect your opinion, I do want you to respect my, because I think it's accurate. And I got lots of references for it. Of course. And so we went around about that. And finally, he said, Okay. <laughs> okay. So writing a book is always, uh, you know, egos get in the way, uh, people's preferences and styles get in the way, and and it's just something that people have to work through. That's true, Michael. And uh, I'm really happy that you managed to collaborate together and uh, uh, write this amazing book. And I wonder really what what happened after this book, since I can't see major changes in the way uh, therapists are looking at um, the situations of their clients or coaches um, as well. They're still using very old fashioned models dealing with uh, personality issues. And I look at this book and since I translated this book into Arabic and I, I think that we're already far behind in the Arabic world, catching up with such advances in psychology. And I look you know, at, at the world and I see that the entire world is still far beyond you know, this as well. So how do you yeah. explain this? Well, the field of psychology is a um, smorgasbord of choices. Okay. And you have, you have everything that's being promoted. There, there is no international society of psychology that, that picks out best practices and really cultivates that. There's just so many schools of psychology and psychotherapy and um, it's going to, for the for the most part, what what we have done in NOP and in brief psychotherapy and in Ericksonian psychotherapy is still pretty revolutionary. And you're right; it really has not caught on. 
there's multiple reasons for that. One is financial. When I learned the NLP models and started using it in my therapy practice, um, instead of having a client that I could count on that income for six months dealing with a phobia, two sessions and we were done. Yeah. So, so there's a financial investment that uh, and I've trained many therapists and they said they, they, they want to know NLP, they want to know these patterns, but they're not going to practice them because it would ruin their business. So this is where <laughs> vested interests have, have come first before the person. Okay. And what would be other reasons? So then there's the, the person, the, the, the thing about all of us, mm-hmm. whatever you get good at, uh, it, it becomes your comfort zone. Your, it becomes your habit. And to learn something new, then could shake all that up, disturb all of that. And then it's like, I'm starting afresh. I've, I've got to start as a beginner. And there's a lot of pride that I don't want to learn anything new. I, I've been practicing this way for 10 years. And uh, it's, been, it's been okay. It's been working. And I don't want to get disturbed. Yeah. And correct. so... Teachers and therapists are as bad about that mm-hmm. as anybody. That they don't want to just serve the status quo. Okay, understood. So um, I want to update my knowledge about um, the personality thing. And uh, since you have written this book um, about twenty years ago, I guess. Um, yeah. I want to ask you this question and uh, hoping from this to uh, to get some new views and refresh my mind about uh, what is going on now in this particular topic. And uh, if you would rewrite this book today, what would be different and what would you keep as it is in the book? What would be eliminated and with whom you would be collaborating, writing a new edition of this book? So this book was published in 2001, and in the last 20 years in in Europe, many NLP uh, therapists and researchers got together and created NLPT, that's Neuro Linguistic Psychotherapy. Um, After they developed that and created protocols for the practice of NLPT, they created several associations and Uh, I think every nation in the European Union has accepted it as a legitimate, credible psychotherapy. Uh, It is now going into Russia. Uh, Just this last week, they had training there with NOPT uh, and and around the world. So if if I were to rewrite it or update it, I would uh, certainly get in touch with a lot of the NOP people who have been doing that and bring a lot of the NLPT um, into the book. How do you feel and expect knowing your book has been published into Arabic? Well, uh, given the fact that it's a big book, it's a 500 page book, um, that must have been a monumental effort to to get that done. But it does provide now, uh, a, a way for a great portion of the of the people of this planet to have access to some of the basic things of NLP, and so I'm very glad to hear about it, and um, uh, gl- glad that uh, it will be uh, hopefully updating the skills and the knowledge of a lot of the people in the Arab countries. Okay, amazing. I would like to to share with you something. Uh, because uh, my story of uh, translating this book came about um, when uh, I was approached by the former minister of culture in Egypt. And uh, he was following my work and asked me to collaborate on doing something together. And he was uh, like yourself. He's a public writer, translator, and um, he's, a, he's a real activist. And he was uh, uh, so open to everything new in the field of psychology. And he was an empirical psychologist, by the way. 
I told them, okay, we have a problem here in Egypt that uh, we would like to uh, to create a culture about uh, new concepts in psychology. And uh, if this book uh, would get to be published through a commercial publishing house, uh, it won't serve the purpose. He put such great effort to uh, convince the, um, the um, I mean, heavy core psychologists um, in, in Egypt to look uh, into the book, to consider the concepts uh, in it. And um, uh, eventually he convinced the people at uh, the National Translation Center in Cairo to get this mm -hmm. book published through them. <laughs> We've been through a lot of, um, uh, let's say, I'm not going to say fights, but discussions about um, uh, if, if this book should be published through this particular center. He was very patient and led such great discussions with those psychologists and eventually, and that's the victory that he hasn't seen because he passed away to COVID a few months ago. Oh, and, wow. Wow. Yeah, and, uh, and this is how this book came about. And uh, I'm really hopeful that psychologists, psychiatrists, coaches, and everybody that is uh, concerned about this, this topic to, to open their mind and, and grab a copy and read it at least twice before they actually do something, you know, with it or um, talk about it or even criticize it. For all the people who took the time, the energy, the effort, put in uh, th their passion to make the book possible, uh, I want to thank thank you very much for uh, that contribution um, and know that it's going to make a big difference in the Arabic world. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. And uh, our conversation continues, uh, but uh, we will co be covering uh, different topics. <laughs> <laughs>